So welcome, Brett. It's lovely to see you again. I think you came and visited me about a year ago, was it? Yes, it would have been now. When you popped in, yeah. Yeah. So um, my name is Kim Knight, and this is the Secrets to Health uh, show. And I love sharing information that changes people's lives in a positive way. And I love interviewing experts who are really at the top of their field in their area of expertise. And I regard Brett as one of those people. He is an expert on uh, herbal detoxification. And so I invited him to, to do this interview. And so we've got a lot of interesting topics that we're gonna be talking about today. But to start with, Brett, can you maybe explain how you got into doing what you do and, and how long you've been doing it for? Okay. Yes, it's a, it's a bit of a story, so I'll try and uh, keep it short. But I often get asked that question, yeah, why did you get into herbal medicine? And I think like a lot of natural health practitioners, it comes about because of our own journey with health. Like there's a the process of realising that, you know, we need to look for alternatives. And I had the similar thing in my 20s. I'd been, when I left school, I started working on the council and laying gas lines in the 1980s. And I was, because I'm quite tall and um, I was doing a lot of shovel work and pick and shovel work in the roads, my back slowly degenerated with all the wear and tear. And I was in so much pain, I, I had to go to the, um, the specialist and he said, after an MRI scan, that my three of my discs, had one had worn out completely to the bone and then a couple of others had ruptured and torn mm -hmm. and that I had to have my spine fused. Wow. And I was only 25 years old. And I, at that time, thought, man, I'm so young to have that kind of a major operation. And he said, the risks are, you know, 50-50 that you'll actually be better and you'll never be able to run again and things like that. And so I thought, well, aren't there any alternatives? And he said, no. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing you can do. There's no options. The, the, the operation's got to go ahead and we need you to do it as soon as possible. So that was my, um, my realisation that there were no alternatives and, and I, I thought there has to be, there has to be something else. So I went searching and that's when I found natural medicine. Basically in the library, there's a whole section on it, <laughs> you know. So, so, so did you find things then to help your back? Well, I just, I started looking into healing and um, all the natural therapies and around the world and I was kind of directed to a couple of things. One of them was... Um, herbal medicine and I think the the practice of herbal medicine going back you know thousands of years really around the ancient cultures of the world mm. but the other thing was healing and um, the whole energy side of things which is I think now becoming realized that there's a lot of potential with energy uh, therapies and things like that but the power of the mind and the energy of the mind and things it really struck me how powerful that is so did you? So I'm sure people want to know. Did you get your back better? <laughs> well, I still I still get a sore back, but um, it's definitely uh, you know I visit to the chiropractor. I rub a bit of comfrey into my spine. I have Epsom salt baths. Um, I use vibration training, which is really good. So it's a combination of things that I've found just to keep it in check, and it's manageable. And of course, I now I can go and do things like I can chop wood and I can lift and I can you know I can run and I can do those things. So. Um, it's probably the best thing I ever did is I, I hopefully I've postponed the operation for a, a long time yet uh, and probably will never need it. So, yeah. Yeah. And as, as you say, I mean, through my Qigong training, we, we've learned how we can literally regenerate tissues, including yes. bones. So yes. our body has an incredible ability to self-heal and you discovered that and I've discovered that and it's almost like a death sentence, you know, for a lot of people when they get told, you know, there's nothing you can do and I was told that too when I was ill and for some of us, some people, they just sort of lie down and die almost and other people, they go, bugger that, I'm not going to put up with that. So there's got to be another way and we've yes. both done that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So how did that lead into you then becoming such an expert and, and, you know, creating all these products for detoxification. Well, I, I couldn't go back to my old career. So I, I basically, when I was studying about how I could heal myself, I, I felt this real drive to, to share what I'd found with other people. And one of those things I found was um, fasting 
and meditation. So combining the two things. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess the mind body connection becomes very much stronger when you go on a, a committed program of some kind where you're focusing on what you're putting into your body, um, but also taking the time out to, I guess, detoxify both physically, emotionally, <laughs> mentally, the whole shooting box. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So did you do that? Did you go off and do that? Yes, I did. And, and I guess from my healing experiences, I started to study herbal medicine, and I guess it was about 1995 when I really started my studies properly and got my first diploma in 97 and open my practice, and it's, it's gone on from there. So the diploma was naturopathy or what, herbal medicine? Or? I did a diploma in herbal studies, and um, I actually graduated in 1998, and then I went on to study human anatomy and physiology for three years at Auckland University Technology, and then I did another diploma, another four-year full-time diploma in herbal medicine, which was much more in-depth, which I finished in 2006. Mm -hmm. And that involved um, traditional Maori medicine as well, which is fascinating. You know, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Very interesting. Yes. Yeah. So you did all this study and obviously lots and lots and lots and lots of learning, which I can't even begin to understand. It was like I was at a seminar a couple of days ago uh, and they would, it, was, it was more geared to naturopaths. And, and so they were sort of speaking in naturopath speak and it just went over the top of my head most of it because right. I had studied that side of things you know the body chemistry and or you know how, how the body works from such an intricate way but so you've done all this training and all and amassed a huge amount of of uh, knowledge and then how did you start to apply that so that you then created your own products yes and in, in 98 I opened my practice and from my experience with studying herbal medicine, I'd actually been growing the plants, going into the bush and harvesting the roots and, and making my own products. Manufacturing was a big part of traditional herbal medicine. So I, rather than me starting to buy products off the shelves, I started to make my own remedies. Mm -hmm. And I was giving people raw herbal teas, herbal powders, and I got a little encapsulation machine and started encapsulating some of the herbs that are so bitter, you just you know find it very hard to take. So uh, over that, through that process, I started developing a little program of giving people a cleanse, putting them on a, a clean food diet and giving them some herbal capsules, which will cleanse the coal on the liver and that sort of thing. Okay. But, yeah. So, so I started putting that into practice. So for some people, I think we need to maybe take a step back. Can you define herbal medicine? Because not everybody really knows what it is. Yeah. Well, it's, it's really the use of plant based material for medicinal purposes mm -hmm. and, and that goes right back to um, well, I guess even biblical times you know when they when they started talking about using things like hyssop and uh, you know frankincense and oils and, and things like that and you know even the old putting the garlic out you know to keep the bugs away and things like that so and we're all familiar with I guess you know some of the the very first drugs that, that came out were actually just basically plant extracts and the first pharmaceuticals are developed from plants. So that's really the practice <coughs> where the practice begins. I mean, I find it very interesting, this, this, this line between when herbal medicine became pharmaceutical medicine. Yes. And, and now how there's such an, and it seems to be anyway, I don't, I don't know what your experience is, but quite an anti, uh, view from the ph pharmaceutical industry on herbal medicine which just seems crazy because herbal medicine as you say has been around for thousands of years can you speak yes. a bit more about how 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 the shift came from herbal medicine to the, you know from uh, pharmaceuticals there's a couple of um, interesting things that happened i think one of them was the the witch burnings so there was a uh, an episode of time i think it was a, uh, over 100 years actually they they tried to eliminate all of the people that were practicing herbal medicine and they called them witches and they got rid of all of that what they call witchcraft uh, along with it and then they um, the, I think it was the Rockefeller family that developed the very first uh, pharmaceutical um, school of medicine and the first pharmaceutical company almost in the same time period so that they could control what the medical professionals were not only learning but what they were actually giving their patients 
Was that and, about the, what was that, the 18th century, 19th century? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, 18th century. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's going back over, over, well over 150 years ago. Yeah, and a lot of people don't realize it. They don't, they don't, we don't think unless we start thinking, oh, actually pharmaceuticals that, you know, they were founded in natural medicine. Yes, and, and even today, I think 25% of the new drugs that are found are found in plants. So they find them in the plants and then they take them into the laboratory and synthesize the compound that they think is the active compound and make a drug out of it. But they so, tend to forget all the other little compounds that go in the plant. So they the, forget. They forget. Yes, they leave them out. They, they, yeah. they just select one. Yeah, so I know, I know yeah. we're going a slightly off topic here and I will come back to topic, but this is quite fascinating. What, what is it then that makes the difference as to, say, for example, any side effects uh, or the efficacy of, of taking, whether it's the herbal you know, compound or the pharmaceutical compound? What is it that makes that, that difference? Um, a plant like chamomile, for example, which has got a, uh, a sleeping property to it, helps you sleep. Uh, it has a, a combination of, of compounds in it, and one of those is magnesium, so it helps your nervous system relax. And it be the same with um, valerian. Valerian helps you sleep. So it's got valerian, uh, valerianic acids in them, which affect the nervous system, but it's also got magnesium in it as well. So when you look at a plant, it's often got a dozen or more different compounds in it, which counter the side effects of the activity of the plant. Mm-hmm. So you get a balanced effect. And I think that, you know, people may find with, um, with nicotine, with smoking, that now they've got pure nicotine in these um, vaping machines, that the side effects of that could actually be worse than the original uh, <laughs> nicotine, <laughs> original tobacco, yeah. I always find it quite funny, you know, when you can tell when somebody's using a vaping thing, you know, sitting behind them in the car and they've got like clouds of smoke coming out the window. <laughs> yeah. It's quite funny. Yeah, exactly. So I very cleverly left my little list of questions just on my desk over there. So just one second while I get it. <laughs> Printed it off, but then to bring it with me. So let's come back to our topic today. You wanted to speak about the biggest silent health epidemics that are going on. So yes. tell me a bit about that. Well, uh, we all know about things like um, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, the blood sugar problems, and weight gain. And we've heard probably on the news that some of these things are affecting 30%, maybe even 40% of the population. And so these things are actually known quite widely to be at epidemic levels, which are escalating mm. and affecting our children and so on. But there's a, another condition which is not spoken about, and it's called metabolic disease. Mm -hmm. And metabolic disease is a combination of those. And when you've got two or more of those conditions at the same time, you're classified as having metabolic disease, which means your whole body is uh, losing control of metabolism. And that metabolic disease is accepted by World Health Organization as leading to heart attacks, strokes, and cancer. In other words, our three biggest killers, which end up um, eliminating about 70% of the population. So we've got a, an epidemic, or we've got several epidemics, which roll together create the biggest ep epidemic in the history of the world, which is metabolic disease. And that is responsible for 70% of the deaths. And it's yeah. not talked about. Well, it is starting to be talked about, interestingly enough, because a new branch, like the latest branch of medicine is called lifestyle medicine. And when I heard that yes. term, I realized, well, actually, that's what I've been doing for 12 years. I just didn't have a name for it. Yes. Which is teaching people how to change their lifestyle in order to get a different result. And I was literally watching a webinar yesterday and they were talking about these non-communicable diseases uh, and how they're just in an epidemic. You know, it's, it's the same sort of thing. Yeah. So it, is, it is actually starting to be recognized and some solutions are, st you know, starting to come on board. But obviously the way, you know, your, your understanding of how to approach this and, and I totally in agreement with it from my own personal experience of doing detoxes is that, you know, it really works. 
so yeah so what is your approach to helping people you know through these types of conditions yeah yeah i guess my saying you know, it's not really talked about would be when you often when you go to the doctor and and you have one of these problems there's a drug prescribed oh yeah 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 and so the <laughs> The reason why the condition's occurring is not often addressed properly. It may be that there's some dietary advice given, like, you know, eat less sugar or, you know, have less alcohol or make some changes, but empowering people to do it and also avoiding the the overload of the body, which actually causes the cholesterol and the blood pressure and the blood sugar problems, the, the inflammation and the acid that go with it. Uh, is really what detoxing is all about. So it's not just avoiding the substances, but giving your body the support to do a good cleanse on the system. Yeah, so to talk more about this overload and the acid and the inflammation. Yeah. Well, the overload comes about over a period of time, and it is those things. So the consumption of, of sugar, uh, processed food, uh, red meats are a big issue because they are acidic and they cause inflammation and they help, they cause the body to struggle a little bit. They can raise the cholesterol. Um, then we've got, I guess, all the other additives and chemicals that are put into food. So, you know, anything with a, a number on the packaging, um, I would be suspicious about when you're doing a cleanse to avoid all of that. And also our household so cleaning agents, um, deodorants, you know, sprays and cosmetics and things that we put on our body uh, to just try and avoid a lot of that as well while we're doing a cleanse. So you end up with uh, giving your body a bit of a holiday and, and giving your liver and your kidneys and your digestive system a bit of a holiday. Yeah. So <clears throat> most, some people may never have done a detox this may even be the first time that they're hearing about the concept. So can you talk us through, I, I know that you have your products and, and I'm actually on one right now. Here's, here's one of my little bottles here. Uh, um, so talk us through, you know, how you recommend people detox their body. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there's two parts to detoxif detoxifying. One of them is avoidance, so avoiding the all those things we just talked about. And the other one is encouraging the body's own detoxification process. So what we do by avoidance is we eat just uh, basically, if possible, organic fruit and vegetables. So it's, it's going really back to basics. And even, you know, homegrown vegetables and all, you know, completely, going completely organic is the optimal way to do it. Mm. So making salads, soups, stir fries, uh, having lots of fruit and smoothies and things like that. And then encouraging the body's own processes, we use the herbs that were formulated to help the liver, uh, to cleanse the colon, uh, some bulking fibre to um, cleanse the colon and give some regular bowel movement. And combining those two things together. So in effect, you're putting less in and getting more out at the same time. Yeah, so you're stopping yeah. the damage, and then and then that gives the body the chance to let go of the toxins which are built up, which usually can't come out unless we stop the damage. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And what that does is it it triggers a, a healing process physically in the body, very very quickly. And sometimes you'll notice within two or three days that yeah. the skin starts to feel different, which is a, the okay. first sign really that the body's starting to heal. What do you mean it feels different? Um, it just feels softer and okay. younger. And, I mean, everybody would like to think they can feel younger and look younger, but it's, it's something that you just it's, – it's like the, the glow that a woman has when she's um, having baby, you know, that sort of that, – just that feeling of um, glowing and, and, and feeling light. And that, that means your body is starting to heal. So it's okay. A regeneration process. Because the main detox symptom that I've noticed is, you know, feeling headachey and crabby <laughs> yeah. and, you know, a little bit, you know, off colour. And I certainly have had that because I've been doing this for just over a week and I noticed that, you know, it always happens the first few days. Yes. Um, and, and, and I love 
telling people to celebrate the detox effects. So can you talk about the not so pleasant <laughs> detox effects, which are actually a good thing? Yes, those those first two or three days can be. It's like like withdrawal symptoms. Yeah. And if you know if you were to go into rehab, you you have those horrible symptoms for a few days until you come out the other side and you feel that you've been freed from those substances. And yeah. That's the wonderful part of it when you get through that. And obviously there's ways you can alleviate those symptoms like having the magnesium baths, um, meditation and massage and that sort of thing. Yeah. And what about should people drink lots of water during that, that time? Um, uh, yes and no. I mean, it's, uh, you'd think yes, but when you're having a lot of fruit and vegetables, you're actually ingesting a lot more water than normal as well. So a little bit more water. Yeah. Okay, so what about, can, can we go through and list some of the, you know, quite common foods and drinks that people will be putting in, in their body that actually build up this toxic load? Yeah, normally we provide a recipe book along with the herbs, but some of the things would be, well, some of my favourites especially are, are pumpkin soup. Now, pumpkin soup is incredible for providing beta carotene, which is very, very healing. So I love that. Pumpkin soup with curry in it, uh, like a Thai curry, that's really good. Oh, okay, so you're, you're talking about the things to eat. I was talking about what are the things that we, we, that we do eat that aren't good for us that build up the toxic load. Things oh, okay. Like Can yeah. we just list those off? Because a lot of people will be eating these things and drinking them and not yeah. really recognising the effect that it's having on their body. Yeah. Well, one of the worst things is um, glutinous products. And a lot of people are now coming out with gluten intolerance or celiac disease and a lot of these things, which is actually because we've been brought up eating wheat-based products, um, grain products which are inflammatory, so processed cereals, um, you know, biscuits and, and crackers and all that sort of thing that are processed, refined carbohydrate grain products. They're really inflammatory. And so we end up with an inflammatory process in the gut and we become gluten intolerant. So really avoiding bread, pasta uh, is a major, major part of it. Uh, and the, the second big thing is the, the meats, especially the processed meats. Mm -hmm. So um, bacon, sausages, ham, salami, all those things. And too much um, red meat and, and even chicken that you find in the supermarkets. You know, they're just not grown the natural way like they should be. Mm. And they are acid forming. Yeah, I mean, so there's just so much stuff. It's like, you know, basically, if you look in a supermarket, then we've got to take out all the packaged stuff, all the yes. stuff, anything with additives, um, meat, um, the, the gluten stuff. It's like there's not very much left. No, <laughs> I, I find it amazing now after I've been doing these detoxes for nearly 20 years, when I go to the supermarket, <laughs> how little I actually get off the supermarket shelves now. Oh, yeah. I it's tend amazing. to just buy my toilet roll at the supermarket. Um, yes. It, it's like even the vegetables, I'm sorry, but they say that, you know, they have these lovely TV ads where all the fruit and veggies look so fresh and then and they just look as limp as, you know, as sad as can be. I find yes. it's much better to buy fruit and veg from a fruit and veggie shop than from the supermarket in general. Yes, absolutely. If I've even studied fruit and vegetables in supermarkets. They've even what, sorry? Studied the pesticide residue on... Oh, yeah. The produce department, and they found that up to 70% of the produce has pesticide residues. I know. But, it's it's mm. actually a big, silent, secret toxin. It is, is, you know, and I have to say, sometimes I'm a bit slack even on, you know, washing my fruit and veggies. I've got some stuff that's meant to, you know, take off that stuff, and I don't use it all the time. And I was speaking, I, I went on a detox retreat a couple of years ago, um, and... And we, we were talking about what happens to the, the fruit and veggies that come in from overseas in New Zealand. And they said, you would be sickened if you saw the vats of chemicals that anything that comes in from overseas, like the pineapples and the bananas and whatever it is that, you know, that comes in from overseas, they just apparently get chucked into these vats of chemicals. Yes. And, yeah. and that all soaks it into the food. And then we eat it and we don't know. We don't know it's happening. No, no. And the sprays that go on even just in New Zealand with the, the farming industry. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, it's it's very bad. There's so much that we're not told about. 
that's kept hidden um, yeah. and we just don't know it's happening. And, and you don't realise it until you go on a cleanse just how different you can feel. Yes, and, that's right. And going organic, you can get up to 10 times the, the antioxidant nutrition from organic produce. Right. Which are the healing, the really the healing compounds. Mm-hmm and anti-inflammatory and alkalizing and all those things which just make you feel so much better. Mm. Yeah, so the inflammation seems to be like one of the biggest issues. And I know that I've got, you know, I've still got stuff that I've, I've got to work on in my gut and that's been, you know, there for a long time. Uh, and I, work, I would do a lot of work on working on things from an emotional perspective but need to yeah. do more work from a physical perspective. Because what I notice for myself, and it's only actually been something I've recently been noticing, is the effects of on my thinking and brain. And you know, so many people talk about brain fog. Can you talk about you know this this gut dysbiosis and how it affects our thinking and our brain? Yes. Well, there's a lot of talk recently about the gut brain connection mm. and the second brain mm. being our gut, and they have found that the gut has more neurons endings than the brain which is fascinating really and it is connected with our emotions so it's our emotional brain i I guess in a sense so we might think we're complex mentally but also very very complex emotionally and so whatever tends to go on emotionally affects the operation of our gut and you know the gut instincts that we have those gut feelings it can really interfere with digestion and can cause us to produce a lot of acid. And eventually, a lot of people end up with um, problems, gut digestive problems, because of the emotional stresses and things that they're under. So it's definitely a big, big thing. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, the way I've learned it is that we have three brains, and it's been proven scientifically because the definition of a brain is a network of neurons with intelligent purpose, and we have one in our head, one in our heart, one on our gut. Um, so there's no doubt that, that we have these three brains and, they, and they, they're working together or they should be. But from a perspective of, because it's such a big thing, brain fog these days. I mean, like so many, just about every client I work with has got brain fog. And whilst um, I know that a lot of it has to do with stress and whatever has gone on in the past that hasn't been resolved, but also current stuff that's not being addressed and resolved, from a purely physical perspective, because you're the expert on the physical side of things, um, you know, compared, certainly compared to my knowledge of it, can you explain how, when we have gut dysbiosis, and maybe you even might want to explain what gut, gut dysbiosis is, how that then affects our head brain? Yes, it's, it's very complicated, that one. I think it's... <laughs> can you make it simple? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can. I mean, I, I understand that from my experience and my practice from seeing people with um, digestive problems that there's always an emotional connection oh, yeah. to that. And it's it's quite often figuring out what their pattern is. And I guess that's that's your area of expertise. Oh, yeah. What yeah. I meant for, I'm just trying to understand because I know that the emotions affect the gut and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm trying to understand... How is it just purely from a chemical, chemistry, cellular, physical, physiological side of things, Mm -hmm. why is it that we get symptoms of brain fog when the gut is not working? Yeah, I guess there's uh, there's a couple of reasons. One is a reflex. So we get a a neural reflex in the body. There's what there's the what they call the vagal vagal reflex. Mm -hmm. So it's a nerve that connects um, our senses up in our head, so taste in, in our mouth and smell and all those things with the gut. Mm-hmm. So the opposite effect would be, um, w- sorry, the, the first instance of that is when you smell or taste something in, in your mouth, um, you get a, reflect, a reflex action in the digestive organs. Mm-hmm. And so it would operate the opposite way as well. When th- something is disturbing your gut or upsetting your gut, you'll get a reflex reaction through the vagal system back to your brain mm. and um, that's yeah that's a natural consequence so if you get a bit of inflammation in the gut you'll get inflammation in, in the in the head and in the brain as well yeah uh, I mean it is it is like we were talking before about you know the metabolic syndrome being an, epi- an epidemic yes. I see brain fog as an epidemic I've right. I've never seen I don't know about you but 
all the people that I see, uh, they have brain fog. Right. It's yes. horrible to have brain fog because you just can't function. It's like you're wanting your brain to work and it just doesn't work and then you, you forget things and your memory yeah. is poor and you can't concentrate. Yeah. And it's, it's really debilitating from a point from a you know point of view of functioning normally in daily life. Yes. Um, and I, th I think it's so important that people understand the connection between the brain fog and obviously the emotions and the stress, but also from the point of view that if we're toxic, mm. we're going to have that brain fog. Yes, well, we know when we have a, a cup of coffee that the caffeine very, very quickly affects us. Mm -hmm. And then within a short period of time afterwards, when it's, the caffeine levels are going down, we start getting the potential headaches that can come with that. Mm. And so whatever we put in our gut very, very quickly affects our mm. brain through, even just through the absorption of the gut, with the gut wall. Mm. So, I mean, all those things, our blood sugar levels, our pH, our inflammation... Mm. they all affect our brain pretty quickly from the gut. And I think the effect is definitely happening quicker and even more significantly because of all this, the toxins and things that we were talking about before. Like when I grew up as a child, I, you know, we didn't have, you know, I'm sure so many toxins around. We ate a much simpler diet. Uh, you know, we, we, we didn't have this toxic overload that we now, you know, most people have. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So um, coming back to what you recommend people do then, tell, t tell us a bit about, you know, some of your programs that you recommend people, because you've got so many different products. Yeah. Uh, they're all fantastic. Can you just talk us through well, some of them? The, the detox program, we combine 24 different herbs into the program that you take over two weeks. And that's really focusing on colon cleansing. So there's some herbs in there like wormwood and cascara and psyllium husk that work on cleansing the colon. But we also use herbs like black walnut and cloves, which help control candida and parasites. So those things, again, if they're irritating your gut, causing inflammation, they need to be eliminated. Mm -hmm. um, and then we use some other herbs for the digestion. So enzymes, pineapple, papaya, ginger, peppermint, fennel, which all help soothe and help digestion, the inflammation, reducing. So it's a combination of these herbs along with um, we use liver herbs as well, like milk thistle and golden seal and artichoke and dandelion, which will help the liver function better and help reduce so the inflammation is, there. This is like the four bottle set. I've only got one here. That, is yes. that we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So, you, so there are different rates that one can do it, right? One can do like the fast, the medium, and the slow. <laughs> yes. The medium, I recommend the medium, which is about 14 days. Well, that, that is the 14 day program. Mm -hmm. And, that's an ideal time frame because it seems like you say there's three or four days getting sort of rid of that detox feeling and getting those substances out of the body. But then it goes to a deeper level where it starts healing and regenerating. And it's good to have a full, at least a full week of that process. To, to come so out how important is it? Cause I have to admit that I I'm, I'm, I'm not as stringent as I know I should be is, is this, you know, cutting out certain things during the phase of when you're taking the, you know, the, the, the tablets? Um, it depends on the person. You know, if, if you've had a, a good, you know, even if you're vegetarian diet or you're organic or that sort of thing already, then there's not a, a huge amount of, I guess, preparation involved and the results can be a lot quicker. But for somebody that's, that's maybe, I don't know, 20 kgs overweight that's had high cholesterol, that's been eating a lot of the wrong things and, and so on, it's really important to do a good, even a, a week beforehand, elimination process and getting right down to those organic fruit and vegetables pretty much by the time you start. Mm. Then the results will be much, much better. It's a shame that, uh, I mean, I know we have organic shops, but... I wish that we had more organic shops. Like yes. in the USA, you know, they have, uh, I think it's called Health Foods. It's the most enormous supermarket and it's all organic. Yeah. And it is like fairyland, you know. I just, <laughs> and yes. it's, you know, it's the size of a, a, a normal supermarket here. Um, I wish yes. we had more of that in New Zealand. I was over in um, LA recently and they have, I think it's Whole Foods you're talking about. Whole Foods, and, yes. Yeah, and you go in there and it's like better than any cafe we've got in New Zealand and right at the front door, the organic produce is just incredible. Yeah. 
it's unbelievable. Um, and actually, when I was in the USA 20 years ago, and I went on a big anti-candida cleanse, and I used to go there to buy my food, and I had such a success because yeah. it was so easy to buy really healthy food. Yes. Uh, yeah. It makes it so much easier. And unfortunately, where I live now, I don't have anywhere to, believe it or not, to, to grow any vegetables. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I miss yes. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is hard to get everything you need organic. But even if we go, you know, to the produce department first and, and stock up with everything we need there, we're, we're making a big step towards. Yeah. The, absolutely. So you've got the detox program, which is one program, and, and there are, you know, there are the sort of the slow, medium and fast, and you have all the booklet that describes all of how to do that and which choice to make. And then you've got the detox and slim. Um, what's that? The, the sachet? Yes. Well, uh, we originally started with the detox program, and we found people that were doing it were losing between 5 and 10 kilos. And it just seemed to happen. It was just a byproduct of, of cleansing. And so as a result of that, people started asking us, what do I do now? I want to lose some more weight. And, of course, it's hard to stay on a detox for another month. <laughs> <laughs> so we developed a program with some more herbs in it, which are for the metabolism, for food cravings, just to trigger those things like blood sugar balance and mm. increase the metabolic rate. So mm. we combine those into the, the drink product with some uh, vegetable protein. Mm -hmm. So people can use that as on a more of an ongoing basis mm. to keep the ball rolling, I guess, and, and to stay on track a little bit. Mm. It's like that constant reminder just to be careful about what we're putting in the body. And mm. you know, Well, they're very nice. Yeah. I mean, one can just use them. Like, you know, instead of having a protein, you know, your, your shake, whatever that is, you, you, you have one of these sachets. Yes, How yeah, I absolutely. use it. Um, you know, a meal replacement. Uh, they're very tasty. Yes. We know that, you know, I know that it's doing me good. I think as human beings, we need to feel like we're either, we're being um, coached or we're with somebody along the program or we're, we're going somewhere with a goal in mind, don't we, to, to stay on track. Otherwise, we, I don't know, we tend to just feel like we're on our own a little bit and we fall off the wagon. And that, that's, that's the idea, I guess, of both what you and I are uh, trying to help people with, just to to make some steps and to keep going and you know oh yeah we need to have encouragement <laughs> so can you can you give me give, give us some examples of people who've gone through your detox program the sort of results that they've got yes uh, i've had some amazing stories of of people healing themselves of of conditions that have been long term so one of those uh, that's quite common is irritable bowel syndrome that's something that we've seen a lot of people come back with and saying it's resolved Another one is Crohn's disease, and that's, that can be quite debilitating and quite difficult to treat. So the herbs send, tend to do some amazing healing on the digestive system. Another one is chronic fatigue. And I've had people come rushing up to me at some of the shows we do and say, I just wanted to tell you that you've, you've resolved my chronic fatigue because these people often feel like there's no help for them. So... It must be the combination of the, the herbs and the foods just building them back up. So that's that's another one. And an interesting um, people have come back to me with sinus problems being cleared too. Mm -hmm. So that can be a long-term problem for some people okay. having sinus issues. Mm. Yeah, that, those are some of the major ones. But, I mean, generally people find their cholesterol, their blood sugar, their blood pressure they all start to come back to normal and they can go and get blood tests after doing a cleanse and find that the doctors can be quite surprised. So we get a lot of people coming back saying the doctor um, wants to know what I've been doing or they were you know, really surprised, how did I do it? And that's inspiring, I think. So it's not that you have to do it continuously, but even once a year, just like a service on your car, you can get your cholesterol and blood sugar and those things to stay in check. Yeah, well, they, you know, you spoke about fasting earlier and, you know, they say, I mean, you know, who is they? But, you know, I've heard it, you know, I've seen it said many different places that, you know, we should fast every so often. And I, I attempt, I don't always succeed to do a one day fast a week. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but we should be doing a maybe a week long one, say every six months or once a year. 
Yes. And again, this is something that not a lot of people realise. No, they don't. I, I think everybody's heard about the keto diet because that's been quite popular. Yeah. And in effect, that's a lot of people confuse keto diet with eating a lot of protein. But to trigger ketosis is quite simply getting the body to use its stored energy. And so by fasting, you're, using your, you're getting your body to use stored energy. And that's a very, very healthy thing for your body to, do, to learn to do. Because what we tend to do is we keep shoveling things in every time we feel like our energy is a bit low. When we've probably got storage there that's capable of keeping us going for several days. <laughs> well, apparently we have enough energy in our body that could light a whole city. Each person has enough well, electricity in their body to literally I, light a whole city if it could be harnessed in the, in the right way. I believe it too. And, and, you know, there's no doubt that the reason that people are tired is either because their body is toxic and it's just overloaded. Yes. And, and so it's got the physical toxic load, but also the emotional stress toxic load. And yes. then, of course, we have all these ads, you know, for, you know, energy drinks and coffee and whatever else. And that's just falsely educating people into a completely wrong, you know, unhealthy solution. For yes. <laughs> It's not a solution at all. <laughs> no. And that's something people realize when they do a cleanse is they don't need to eat half as much as they thought they did. Yeah. And they have more and more energy. Yeah. Which is really surprising. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that... Sorry, Dom. So semi-fasting, it does trigger ketosis, and that's, it doesn't have to be a protein diet. It's just a matter of they say that if you um, eat within a, an eight-hour window and then you have the 16-hour uh, the break, it doesn't matter really what you eat. You, you'll trigger ketosis. That's interesting. Yeah, and that works really well. Okay. Yeah. So what would you say would be a good – I suppose it's different for each person, but what would be a good eight-hour window to be doing the eating? Um, leaving breakfast or skipping breakfast, which you think that's you shouldn't do, but it works extremely I well. I hate eating breakfast. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I do it on different time frames, different days. Sometimes I'll have a smoothie for breakfast and try and have dinner early, so mid afternoon even, if possible. Mm -hmm. Or the other way around is leave your breakfast and have a like a late uh, morning around eleven o'clock, and then stop eating after seven. So okay. eat within an eight-hour window. Okay. And that's a great thing. That's, that's going to detoxify your body by burning stored energy as well. Yes. Mm. Well, we need to – this has been really fascinating, and I'm sure you could talk for weeks. Um, but is there, <laughs> we need to sort of bring it to a close. But is there uh, one last thing um, that you would like to share that you feel like would be important to, to, to tell people? Um, I guess – you, what you are is a, a sum of the parts that make you up. And so some of those parts are things that we've taken on as, as beliefs and attitudes and opinions and, you know, all those things that make us up mentally um, and emotionally, I guess. But the physical parts we put into our body make us up physically. And that's the foundation, I think. That's the foundation of what we put the emotional and mental parts of ourselves on. So we need a good physical foundation to work with. Mm. And so by cleansing and restoring the body physically, we somehow, we purify and start the healing process on those other levels as well. So it's, it's a great place to start. That's what I, would, I guess, leave you with. Yeah, yeah. And, and they all interlink. And actually, yeah. one last thing, You've, have you got a book? Yes, so the book got published. Uh, it's called Cleansed and Cured, and it got published last month. Oh, awesome. And so it's now in all the health, uh, sorry, in all the bookstores. Oh, fantastic. Around New Zealand, so Wit Calls and Paper Plus and so on. Oh, good. And well done. the reason I wrote the book is because there's been a bit of scepticism from the medical establishment about detox and cleansing and, and all of that. So I've compiled all the history and evidence and case studies and all the scientific research. Oh, fantastic. But I've also thrown in there a lot of recipes and ideas on the, the foods and herbs for people to, so can, they can use it themselves. Oh, fantastic. Great. Yeah. yeah. So also one thing to mention is that if people buy any of your products through my, going through my webpage, they get a discount. 
So um, there's a there's a uh, a link on my website somewhere. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. So people go to uh, I just and I'll just show people. I'll just come out of this uh, screen for a second and. So if they go to kimnighthealth.com recommended, then you'll see your, a link here to go to your website. And uh, if they go to your website, then you've got all your different products. You've got your book, the detox program, the slim program, and lots of other things. What's the body tune? The body tune is the, it's the combination of the detox and slimming program. So that's got all the herbs for detoxing, all the herbs for slowing combined into the protein drink. Nice. Yeah, so that's... I haven't, I don't think I've, have I, do they come in sachets or just in the box, the pot? They come in pots and sachets. Oh, both. I've got the sachets then, haven't I? Have that. Yes, I have. Yes. That's the one I was talking about actually that I like to use, you know, like a smoothie. <laughs> Right. Oh, there we yeah. go. There, there are the sachets in, 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 the, in the boxes there. Yeah, so lots of information on your website uh, for people to check out. So that's brettelliot.com. Uh, but if you want the discount, then you need to go through my website, which is kimnighthealth.com, and enter the code KIM25, and you'll get a discount on your order. Yes. In <laughs> fact, uh, even if they land on our site and put KIM25, that'll still that'll work. Oh, right. That'll work fine too. So. Yes, that'll give them twenty-five dollars. I think twenty-five dollars off whatever they choose to look at. Awesome! Yeah. Thank you for that. We we're, so, we're giving away that little book of recipes at the moment too. With any any orders? Oh, cool! Yeah, great. Until July the twentieth. Great. Yeah. So that's awesome. getting getting hot with the food during winter. Lots of oh yeah, lots of food's a good idea. In New Zealand, of course, you like you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you've got a lovely website, so I encourage people to go and have a look and just, you know, look at all the information, all the products, try some of the products. They absolutely work. I think you've done a fantastic job in creating what you've created, mm -hmm. and I'm very grateful for everything that you do. Um, so thank and you, you too. so much. You too, Kim. <laughs> you're doing <laughs> fantastic you. work. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So thanks so much, Brett. Um, uh, we'll we'll sign off and people can watch this later if they didn't catch it live and uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's been wonderful to talk. It's a pleasure. Yeah, okay. and we'll see you again soon. All right. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye now. Bye.